So, we have seen a lot of circuits using gates, we saw circuits using MSI medium scale gate circuits which again consists of gates. So, these are all called combinational circuits, I will tell you the reason later on. These are called combinational circuits, circuits which use only gates of different types, even multiplexers and all that combinational circuits because they only use gates. We are going to have later on another type of circuits called sequential circuits, we will talk about it later on. <coughs> In the combinational circuits we have discussed the basic gates, simple circuits involving gates and we saw also circuits which are medium scale integrated like multiplexers, decoders, uh, priority encoders, parity generators and so forth. Now, one more topic left in this common circuit discussion is called programmable logic devices. What is happening? Programmable logic devices. also called PLDs, programmable logic device. Now, <clears throat> what is a programmable device? See all of us know computer programming, programming microprocessors. So, here we have circuits, combinational circuits which can be programmed for different things. That means, the IC will be given to you and you can put it to different use uses by changing some things around, not hardware. Once the IC is manufactured and given to you, you have no choice with the hardware, but software wise or connections wise, we can make changes. So, these are called programmable logic devices, there are many of them we will talk with, we will today we will start with ROM, all of you must have heard ROM, ROM stands for read only memory. Read only memory, what is a memory? Memory is something, memory is a circuit or device which holds what you give like a data. This is called read only memory because whatever you want to put in the memory is already there, you cannot do it, you can do it once. Later we will see we can do it many times, but you can only read what is the inside, the contents of the memory can be read. This read only memory or ROM is nothing is similar to truth table. Suppose you have three variables, yes, so far we have been seeing circuits with input variables A, B, C inputs. So far we have been doing, what we have been doing is write truth tables using A, B, C and then we got the output F based on what is 0 and what is 1 and then we simplified it, we drew a corner map, simplified it and drew get circuit with that. Same thing happens here except it is hardwired, already it is inside. So, what I am saying is suppose I have 3 inputs and 2 outputs. I will call them F1, F2.
with F1, F2. Come tomorrow. He is not there, but tomorrow will come. So there are three inputs, so there are eight combinations 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 and there are two functions we are going to, usually we do one function, but in the case of binary to code, binary to ASCII converter or binary to grey code converter, we had several outputs. For example, we wanted to convert a binary into grey code, four inputs, four outputs. Last time we saw was seven segment display. We have seven segments from which you can have nine dig, 10 digits 0 to 9. So, these are multiple output, multiple input, multiple output circuits. Suppose I have one such circuit, multiple input, multiple output with multiple inputs namely 3 and multiple outputs namely 2. Suppose I have an arbitrary, I do not have anything in mind, I will put something like this as one input, output, second output could be Normally what you do, you draw a corner map using these three variables, map F1 and the map, simplify it, get a gate, get a Boolean expression, implement it using gates, do the similar thing for F2 using these inputs and this output, you do a corner, you draw a corner map, simplify the map, get the Boolean expression, get gate circuit. What happens in a ROM is we do not do all the simplification because this has all the 8 combinations possible and all you have to say which of these combinations will be an F1, which of the combinations will be an F2. For example, we will see We will have 8 combinations. This corresponds to M0, that means A bar, B bar, C bar. This one will be M1. A bar B, B bar C. Then this will be M2. A bar B, C bar. And finally, it will be M7, A, B, C. Now, for example, F1 has M0. M1, M2, M3, these are main terms. So, F1 is M1, M1 is there, M0 is not there, M2 is not there, M3 is there. M4 is there, M5, M6 is not there, M7 is there. So, these are the min terms present in F1. In F2, we have min terms M1, M2, M3, M6, M7. What is available to you is this min terms available to you and these lines are available to you. And what you have to do is to connect this min term to this output circuit line. For example, F1 has the following min terms M1, M4, M5, M7. Whether we want these min terms or any other min term, all the min terms will be available to you. So, this is the hardware inside. 
So this consists of a decoder. Because decoder records all the possible combinations. We remember 3 to 8 decoder. <coughs> we saw it earlier. So this is a 3 to 8 decoder with 8 outputs. Corresponding to the min terms M0, M1, M2, M3. And whichever min terms are required for a particular function, you connect them to this line. This is output line. These are called word lines. We have inputs. <coughs> the outputs. We have inputs to the output. Input is given through a decoder. In this case, it is two to eight, three to eight decoder. Suppose we have four inputs, sixteen min terms will be there. Four to sixteen decoder. Depending on the number of inputs, the decoder size will vary. If there are n inputs, it will be 2 power n min terms. So these min terms are all available. The whole thing together is the ROM. I will put a little color in this. I told you to get this. This yellow box comes as one IC chip. All you have to do is to connect the inputs A, B, C and <coughs> F2, F1, F2. <coughs> Which are the min terms present will be marked as I put a dot here, we will put a dot here to make it clearer. I will put a cross. This cross means there is a connection. That means a connection exists for M1 to F1, M3 to F1, M4 to F1, M7 to F1. These are called word lines, these are output lines, these are input lines. Inputs are decoded to number of min terms and these min terms are connected based on the function that you are trying to design. This is the function I am trying to design. So whatever min terms I have to be present, those min terms will be connected to the output line F1. Similarly to F2 it will be this 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 cross I am giving just to make it clear it is a connection exists between this word line M6 and this output line F2. What is the advantage of this? I can choose a ROM of any size depending on the requirement of the problem, all the min terms are already available. Supposing I have a function in which there are 5 inputs and 4 outputs. Suppose I want to design a digital circuit with 5 inputs and 4 outputs, 5 inputs and 4 outputs. So, I will have 5 inputs will give me 2 power 32 min term word, word lines. 
5, 2 power 5 is 32 word lines. This is 5 to 32 decoder. I give my inputs to these lines A, B, C, D, E, R, U, V, W, or W, U, V, W, X, Y, or something. U, V, W, V, W, X, Y, Z, Z, and these min terms, there are five outputs. I'm showing it here because internally it gets cloud cluttered. There are four output lines. I'll call them F0, F1, F2, F3. These are all inside. I'm just showing it outside so that you don't get it becomes very crowded if I do it inside. Very crowded. So what we do is, whichever min term is required for F0, it will be connected. This is programming the ROM. So read only memory is a hardware who where all the min terms corresponding to a number of inputs are present and as many outputs as you need and you have to connect it is not that it is automatically connected depending on the function depending on f1, f2, f3, f4 you want you connect the appropriate min terms to the particular outputs f1, f2, f3. Who does that? You do it or it is available in the shop. There are two types. One is mask programmable. It will be done in the factory. Standard ROMs, code converter for example. Code converter you do not invent, it is there. So they can program it and give it to you. The manufacturer can give a code converter. Supposing you want to convert binary to ASCII or binary to grey code. You know the connections required. On the other hand, when you want to do something of your own, some particular circuit whose values of F1, F2, F3, F4 are different for you, then you can do the programming. So it is either mask programmable, mask programmable is also called factory programmable. Why is it called mask programmable? Because you need to design a mask. Or user programmable. Mask programmable usually done in the manufacturing stage. For standard circuits they do it. This is user. Non-standard circuits you want to design, user. So for this, you need a separate hardware called programmer, RAM programmer. You need to have it in your lab, and you give the inputs, and there is a provision by which you can keep connecting the, the, the typing the type of connections you want for each of the word line. There are 32 word lines, so 32 times you have to feed in the numbers you want connected and not connected and you get this. Why is it called read only memory? Once you do this programming either by you or the manufacturer, it is only readable. You give the inputs, output will change, output will get available. That is all there is. Why is it called memory? Memory is because once you program it, it stays there. You do not have to do it every time. 
once you program it either by factory programmable or mass programmable or user programmable, it remains there, you do not have to change it. When the power goes also it will be there. When the power is removed, then also it will be there. That is called that is why it is called memory. Actually, it is not a memory that we use in computers and all that. That is a different memory. RAM, read only memory. We will talk about it later. I mean RAM, read write memory. In this particular case, we have inputs, we have outputs, and connections are established based on either the standard circuit like code converter and all that or user programmable where user defines the functions. What are the uh, word line, what are the connections, what are the min terms, what are the outputs based on that you decide. Now, um, the size of the ROM, see there are, let us say in general, In general, we may have n inputs which are result in 2 power n min terms because 1 min 2 min terms, 2 variables you get 4 min terms, 3 variables you get 8 min terms, 4 variables get 16, so it is 2 power n, 2 power n min terms and number of outputs is decided by u again, m outputs let us say. The raw in which there are n inputs and m outputs, the size would be 2 power n times m bits the size. Size of the ROM with n inputs and m outputs will be 2 power n times m and that means inside there are 2 power n word lines all decoded from this n inputs n inputs decoded into 2 power n word lines and each of these word lines may be connected to one of these outputs or more of these outputs. That is why this size comes. Very convenient circuit or I see to use in many applications, sometimes standard, sometimes non-standard, we can use it that way. I will give an example. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, I will continue. Suppose I want to generate a circuit Suppose I have a circuit in which there are 4 outputs, F0 whose min terms are 0, 1, 4, 6, F1 <coughs> whose min terms are 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. F2 
sigma m 0 1 2 6 of 3 sigma m 2 3 5 6 7. So there are four variables, I mean, yeah, uh, three variables because no min term is more than seven. Up to seven, we have three min terms, so three inputs. So we have three inputs, four outputs, F1, F0, F1. So it is going to look like this. Let us call this inputs A, B, C, call these outputs F0, F1, F2, F3. The size would be 2 power 3 times 4 bits. You never multiply this. Suppose you write 2 power 3 is 8, you know that. So 8 times 4, 32. You can't say 32 bits. Answer is right. But the problem is nobody will know how many input lines, how many output lines. If you give the total number 2 power 3 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, you can always say it is 32 bit ROM. 32 bit ROM does not make sense. It makes sense if you say 2 power 3 times 4 because you know that there are 3 inputs and 4 outputs. Do you understand? 32 bit ROM can also have 4 inputs and 8 outputs. I mean 4 inputs 2 power 16 times 2. 4 inputs and 2 outputs also will have 32 bits. But I want to go to the shop and buy an in ROM which has 3 inputs and 4 outputs. If I go and ask for 32 bit ROM, I may get a ROM with 4 input and 2 outputs, it is also 32 bit, it is wrong. So I want to always mention a ROM size in terms of the number of min terms, I mean the number of variables, 2 per number of variables times number of outputs. So how are we going to do this? So as we said, we will draw this. M0, M1, M2, This is what F zero one F zero is zero. I'm sorry. This is F zero. F zero is zero one four six. F one is two. 3, 4, 6, 7. F2 is 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, 6. F3 is 2, 3, 5. As I said, the whole thing is within a device. So it will have three inputs. And four outputs, F0, F1, F2, F3. How do you make a connection? Because I said a given min term has to be connected to a given a min term line is called a word line, I said. Word lines have to be connected to output depending on the requirement. How do you do the connection? There are switching elements in between. So if you want to draw a bigger circuit, 
there is a switching element. Today's modern technology, lots of variations are possible. I will just show you like this. Let us say F1, F0, this is M0. M1, you make a contact between this and this. The switching element has been inserted. There is a concept which says the switching element is already there with a fuse. We will see diagrams like this in the book. This is a fuse. F0. If this fuse is left intact, there is a connection. If you do not want M0 to connect to F0, you remove the fuse. Blow the fuse. How do you blow the fuse? By passing a current. So, if there is no connection between this M0 and F0, all the when you buy from a factory, all min terms will connect to all outputs. All min terms will be connected to all outputs. You selectively choose the min terms that need to go into a particular output by retaining the connections and removing or blowing the fuses of the other connections. This is one technology. There are lots of technologies today. This is one technology which make it easier to understand. I am giving you this example. There are also switching elements. The switching element can be made on or off depending on the current you pass. In the mass programmable, all this is done by the factory because they have designed a mass for a particular application. But if you do it, you do it in a ROM programmer, and the ROM programmer will give these connections. For example, min term 0, they, you do word by word. You say min term 0. F0, F2 have to be connected. So, give that 0, 1, 0, 1. So, it will retain this and blow off this. Then you go to the second min term <coughs> 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, 0 again. <coughs> you have to 0, 1, 1, 1. You give this word, punch it in the words in the programmer. Automatically, these connections are established or connections are removed. That is how you do the programming. And once you do the programming, you can also erase it. So, ROM mass programmable coming from factory or user programmable. User programmable is called programmable ROM because when you go and buy a market something which is already done, you call it a ROM because you do not have a programming capability. So, let us look at the nomenclature now. ROM is already programmed. That is called mass program. Or factory program. ROM mass programmable or factory programmed. Then you have PROM. Programmable ROM where user does this using user program using the ROM programmer. You buy a ROM programmer, put this ROM device on this programmer. Go one word by one word, word by word. Eight words are here. Each word you say 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, depending on the connections required. Other things will be removed. Or is the other way. Whichever you want to blow, you give the connections. Whichever you want to retain, you leave it. Either way is possible. Third is erasable program. Once you do the programming, can we change it? It is 
called EEPROM, erasable programmable. Erasable. A ROM program with a factory program ROM or a mass program ROM, you cannot erase it. User program can be erased. User program, you put it in what is known as a ROM ultraviolet. This programmer, the ROM will have a sort of a window, transparent window. So, in the book, you can read it. Supposing this is my ROM chip, I see. In the middle of it, there is a circle, transparent, through which the light can go. You shine light on that window. If you shine light on that window, you can erase it for a given time, say 10 minutes, 5 minutes. So, you shining ultraviolet rays. Erasable using UV using ultraviolet rays, you can erase it. Okay? And for a given period of time, they will give you, when you buy it, they will give you how long you have to shine the light. How many times can you do this? I do a program, erase it. Again, I do another program, erase it, another program, erase it, fixed number of times, very large number, thousands of times, 10,000 times that they will say, we will not use it that many times, but it is limited. You cannot do infinite number of times. You can do 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 2,000 times, 10,000 times, they will save you. You can program and erase it, program and erase it, program and erase it. Large number of times, there is no hurry. There is, there is no, it is not a small number, you do not have to worry about it. Now, another thing has come, this is called UVE PROM, ultraviolet erasable. Now, there is one more thing has come, EE PROM, electrically erasable. Instead of taking it out of the unshining ultra, ultraviolet ray, now this EE prom, you can pass currents in one direction, it charges programs, another direction, it erases. So, you can erase it using passing current. You have to program it also passing current, erase it also passing current, different amplitudes and different directions. That is electrically erasable. Now they also called EA prom electrically alterable. That means electrically erasable, electrically erasable, ultraviolet erasable means I can do the whole thing. I can erase the whole thing, reprogram it. But electrically alterable, I can go and change one word. One word. 0, 0, 1, 0, I want to change it as 0, 1, 0, 1, I can do this, called electrically alterable. See, these are all based on so much technology has come today. Semiconductor device technology, lots of new devices, charge storage, charge discharge. I am not going to go into that, it is not the, it is not in the scope of this lectures. I just want to tell you it is possible, that is all. As far well as we are concerned, we are users. 
you take the ram depending on the size depending on the how much you want what you want to design so i have four inputs three outputs you go and buy 2 power 4 into 3 not all sizes will be available in the market i want to buy 2 power 4 times 3 it may not be available you may have to buy 2 power 4 times 4 what can you do they cannot make all the possible inputs and outputs in a shop market so you get the nearest smallest size possible and then do the programming if it is mass program you have nothing you all have to do is to get it and use it it's a user programmer you put in a you program of a programmer as i said you have to do this one word at a time nowadays you can also do it using computer program you don't have to do it one word at a time and erase it if you want you can do uv or electrically that is enough if you know all that you do not know you do not have to know the of course it is always nice to know things but if you are interested you can always read up what are the various programming technologies and erasing technologies today but I am not going to go into them now because I do not have time and it is not in the scope I would teach you a lot of so make under device theory if I have to tell you everything which is not also in the scope of this course ok. Mr. Kannar, I am going to unmute them for a minute. We will have any questions. Okay. Okay. Kannar? Sure, sir. Yes, sir. You can unmute, unmute for a minute and if you have any questions because I am going to give some sure, examples. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Any sure. questions? Questions from the audience? No questions at all. So any question raise your hand is that I am doing extremely well or they do not understand anything I say I do not know which is true. Okay let us move on. Suppose I want to design a hexadecimal to ASCII code converter. using ROM. What is the type of ROM I need? Size and what will be the content inside the ROM? All I wrote you the words, word, word lines, connection between word lines and the output, these are called content of the ROM. So, what is the type of size of the ROM we need and what will be the ROM content if you want to design a hexadecimal to ASCII code converter. Hexadecimal is 0 to F. What are the ASCII codes corresponding to this 0 to F? First, you have to write that. So, I have here. Hexadecimal zero zero will be three one hex 
1 will be 3, 2. Like that it goes on, 9 will be 3, 9. Then we start with A, B, C, D, F. A will be 4, 1. B will be 4, 2. And F is 4, 6. This is the XLSML code 0 to F. For each of these codes, what is the ASCII code? 31, 32, 39, 41, 42, 46. 31 to 39, 41 to 46. Now, I want to design a ROM to hold this. So, when I put this XLSML number, I should get the ASCII code. The aim of this problem is I will apply an ASCII hexadecimal code I should get ASCII. How many bits does it have an hexadecimal code has? Hexadecimal code has 4 bits. So, the number of inputs should be 4. 4 inputs. How many bits does the hexadecimal code have? There's 7. Six. 7 outputs. ASCII has 7 outputs, 7 bits, X has 4 inputs, 4 bits. Now, first thing is to draw the truth table for this. Call this so what is zero, H one, H two, X three. Whatever you want to call it, anything you want, fine. So, x i input as key will have 7 so it will be from a 0 to a 6 I already gave you the values. Thirty one ASCII code is thirty one. No, not hex here. I'm sorry. These are ASCII codes. These are X. This is the A ASCII. Already said thirty one. Thirty one is 0, 1, 1, 30. I think it is 30, 0 is 30, 1 is 31, oh, I am sorry, 0 is 30, this is 1, I will change it, 
2 9 is all right. So, 0 is 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 is 0 1 1 31. Nine will be thirty-nine. I said this is nine. Thirty-nine zero one 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 zero zero one. A is forty-one. This is nine. A A is forty-one. And F would be one zero zero. F is forty-two. Zero one A F is forty six So I need a ROM whose size is two power four. Times seven bits. I give already wrote it here two power four times seven bits. So I give H zero H one H two H three. I get here. Seven outputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A zero, A one, A two, A three, A four, A five. And what is inside this content is what is this? This is the content of the ROM. So I need to have words, I mean, we will call it M0, M etc. and connect them. So it so happens, it is, uh, I do not want to write the whole table, it is going to take a lot of time. So this should be, uh, for example, if you take it A0, I will have to write at least one of them completely. For example, if you take um, A0, what are the terms for which A0 will be <coughs> high for this? So many things here. So what we will do is, this I am going to give us an exercise. It is going to be too much of a work to do it in the class, it will take a lot of time. Um, <clears throat> I'll quickly day take one because this is all zeros. For example, if you take A six, A six has min terms zero to nine is zero, and min terms. 10 to 15 as 1. So, this is sigma m 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This also is easy because this 31, 39, it becomes 40. So, I can also do this here. These are simple. <laughs> 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, then becomes 0, 0. So if I take the A6, A5, A5 would be sigma m 
0 to 9. A4 also is the same thing. Now, interestingly, I find A4 the same as A5 and A6 as a4 bar because this is whatever min terms are not here or not here, they are here. This and this are same. Of course, A3, A2, A1, A0, you do it. It takes a little while. I am not going to do it as I said. So, you will have finally one min term expression for A0. A A2, A1, A3, A4, A5, A6 I already did. So, you have to draw the map, the content inside. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So this is M zero, this is M fifteen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is M nine, this is M ten. So, what we did was for A6, A10, A11, A12, A13, A15, A16. For A5, it is 0, for A4 also. I am leaving it as an exercise for you to finish A3, A2, A1, A0. All you have to do is to look at the, you complete the table, you will find which min terms are present for A1, A0, which min terms are A1, which min terms are A2, which min terms are A3 and correspondingly draw the crosses here. That is a simple exercise, I do not want to do it because it is going to take a lot of time and I want to leave it as an exercise to you. But one thing is, you have taken the size as 2 power 4 by 7, is it really required? No, because there are 4 inputs, out of 7 inputs, A4 and A5 are the same, A7 is the, A6 is the inverse of A4. So, if I enough, I will have A0, A1, a2, A3, A4, then A5 is same as A4 and A6 is inverse of. So that means I need only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inputs. So instead of 2 power 4 by 7, it is 2 power 4 by 5, which is the size because there is no need to do separately A5 because A5 and A4 are same. There is no need to separately do A6 because A6 is inverse of A4. So I can simplify this. That is why I want to, that is why I want to, to show you that it can be simplified. That is the reason I took the last three instead of the first four. The rest is very simple. For example, if you take anything else, you draw the min terms and then put the crosses. That is called content of the ROM table. What is inside the ROM table is this, this is the content of the ROM table. Complete the content of the ROM table, 
and draw this type of hardware and showing the min terms which are connected to F0, A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. We also did, if you remember two classes ago or last class I do not remember, 7 segment display recorder. Number 0 to 9 or 0 to F. Did we talk about it? 7, seven, seven segment display? What is a 7 segment display? A display that you see in digital circuits, clocks, bank tellers, elevators, traffic lights is a 7 segment display. Which can display from 0 to 9. So, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We also drew the truth table for B, C, D numbers. 0 to 9 and corresponding 7 segments A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This table we have already done couple of classes ago. I would like you to do this also using ROM because for example, we know B, C, D 0. BCD0 would be BCD0 will be A, B, C, D, E, F. BCD1 would be B and C. So, you finish this table, try to get the ROM size and ROM content. For a BCD to 7 segment display, the exercise, this is one exercise to complete the BCD um, hexadecimal to ASCII code converter, hexadecimal to ASCII code converter. I started with the problem, I defined the problem, number of inputs, number of outputs. I told you how it is going to look like, the truth table, I did not complete it. I also did, showed you this, how it can be done and I also showed you how to simplify this. Two outputs are not required. Similar exercise I want to do, use ROM, using ROM. Design a BCD to seven segment display. What do you mean by yes? Number of inputs. Number of outputs, ROM size, and ROM content. When you are asked to design something using a ROM, you have to give the number of inputs, number of outputs, size of the ROM, and what is inside the ROM. That is an exercise. <coughs> I have done with ROM. Uh, any questions? We started with programmable logic devices. Devices which are available as combination logic but can be programmed lightly. For example, I can program this into ASCII code converter, I can program into 7 segment display, I can program it to any other thing I want. 
it can be mass programmable or it can be user programmable we also discuss we can also change it by erasing it if you have a programmer you can program it yourself you can erase it using ultraviolet or electrical or you can also alter it using electrical there are couple of more programmable devices we will talk about in the next lecture programmable logic devices there are two more programmable logic array and programmable array logic but i want to now stop for this i want to ask you if you have any questions and i also i want to do one or two problems from the previous lecture any questions say i am given a, a rom which is of uh, size uh, two part two cross four two part two cross four yeah what is the problem that is it has four outputs and uh, two inputs is possible Uh, but I want to design. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me draw this for you. So two power two from four will be four min terms. Min zero, m one, m two, m And there will be four outputs. I'll call this F zero, F one, F two, F three, and two inputs. I'll call it uh, A and B. So, what is your question? What is your question? What is it if I want to implement F three, which has a uh, min term of three inputs? You cannot use it. Obviously, otherwise, what you should do is. This ROM you can't do it because the inputs are there, <coughs> and you only got something which is. What you can do is there are a couple of ways you can do it. Two ways. One is that let us say the third input is C. Third input is C. You write the equation of Boolean equation of F three. Only choose A B terms to get this, and have extra gates outside. <coughs> Do you understand what I am saying? So there will be this F three will have terms in, in terms con, uh, involving A and B, and terms involving C, A B and C. So remove A and B terms, put it into this, and get your F three. We will call it F three bar or F three dash, and then outside of this, you can have another logic, small logic, and get F three. Otherwise, I'll go for a bigger ROM. After all, ROM is so expensive, inexpensive, cheap. Instead of going for two input, four output ROM. You get three input for output ROM. You can get it. Can I implement it using two uh, two input ROMs? That's what I'm saying. Two input ROM you can do, but third input C cannot be included. For that, for that I'll have to get the F three. I'll have to get the F three return completely. Look at the terms which does not require C. And implement it, and I will call this F three dash. This F three dash, F three is made up of F three dash, F three dash, or F three prime, or whatever. No C, no C, plus F three double dash, or whatever, including C. So this second part, I will have to separately using gates. I should do it. So I will have an odd term of this and this. This is my final F three. This is what you should do. Otherwise, you go for a bigger ROM. I would, if I were you, I would go for a bigger ROM. Today it's so inexpensive, so cheap. 
Why would I want to do all this? Sometimes occasionally it happens. For example, you have a large number of inputs. Let us say six, 15 in, 16 inputs. There are 17 variables. Okay. Instead of going for next 16 to next size may be 32. Because as I said told you, you do not get ROM for every size. So, 16 input ROM may be there, next may be 32 input ROM. So, what I do is, I will get a 16 input ROM and implement it and then do this extra logic for 17. That way I can do it because when there are 17 terms, number of terms with the 17th input will be very, very few. Large number of terms will not be there in every output. So many outputs may be there, but then each of these outputs will have only 2 or 3 terms. So, F17 may have only 2 or 3 terms. I do it outside separately and mix it with them. Otherwise, if it is a small number like 2 or 3, I would rather go for a bigger ROM. Okay. Yes sir, no. What? Do not seem to be happy. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. The ASCII for 9 is 39, then for A, 41. Why we not take an account in 40, sir? I do not know. This is what it is. I do not know. I will have to find out. In fact, I was. I took it from a book, this ASCII codes. ASCII codes are not, I can't remember, I say. There are seven, 2 power 7 ASCII codes. So, I cannot be remembering all that. I took it from a book, that is where it is. In fact, I was wondering what happens to 40. You go and find out. Does not matter. See, even, even, if, even if there is a mistake, does not matter. This is a procedure. Given an extra code, get the ASCII code and get the size of the ROM and do the min terms and do the logic. The procedure is more important than the actual value of the ROM because I am not going to define, design a hexadecimal to ASCII, but I was in fact surprised when I, I was looking through a book today to before coming to the class to do this problem. So, I found this is 0 to and then A started with this. I do not know what, in between there may be something. Okay, you can find out and let me know. I will also go and find out. But does not matter as I said, it may be a mistake. It is not a conceptual mistake or a design mistake. It is a mistake of the table. It may be there, it may not be there, it may be it is a mistake in the book. It does not matter because we know number of inputs, we know the number of outputs, we know how to get the min terms, we know how to connect it we know size of the ROM that is all is needed because this is one example the other one is an example there are lots of examples like that do not worry. Okay. Any questions? I want to give you a simple example a question before I leave let us do it quickly 2 minutes. Can you design a full adder using 4 to 1 multiplexers 2 of them you can use use 2 4 to 1 multiplexers because we have done this I want to give you a revision exercise otherwise we will not follow up anything. Uh, last homework all of you have started doing assignment 2 yes or no did you get assignment 2 yet assignment 2 is there and do it and do the submission as required by professor Dr. Uh, Usha Nagarajan. Uh, right now, I want to do because these are all revision. Every time I have I ask question from the previous lecture or one or two lectures. So, do you understand the question? I want to design a full adder, three inputs A, B, C, I, and I want an output sum and carry, C O. Now, I'm giving I'm giving you two four to one multiplexers. How will you do it? You have two minutes to complete. Please do it. Let us see how many of you have been following my lectures properly. 
we have done full adder, we have done multiplexers. Zain a two to a full adder using two four to one max. Anybody has a finished the solution, you put your hand up. I will wait for 2 minutes and then start doing it myself. But then I do not like to do it all. Everything I do and you do not do anything, that is not good. You know it? These are 2 to 1 max, 4 to 1 max, 2 numbers. You got it? Anyone? Yes, sir, please tell. Yes, sir. sir. Uh, one person has finished it. One max is used for sum and another max is used for carry. That is right. Correct. Okay. And uh, AB is used for the selector input. First is CI minus 1 is given. CI minus 1. Second is um, CI minus 1 bar. Uh, second, second is CI minus 1 bar. We will call it only CI. Okay, then third. Uh, third also uh, CI bar. Uh, fourth CI. Okay, let me let us check this. Okay, this is A bar, B bar. C I okay. Second one. Scary Second out. one. Um, first is zero. C O what? Zero. Okay. Zero. Okay. Second is uh, C I. C I. Third is C I. Okay. Fourth is one. Okay. I assume it is right. It's sim something similar to that. You can always find out from the corner map. We have to get the min terms A bar B bar C I uh, A bar B C A bar A B A B A B, A B bar C I bar A B C I which is terms in terms 1 a b c this is 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 so a b c i bar is this then a, a b bar a B bar C A bar. How did we get that? Okay, one. A B bar C A bar. A bar B C A bar. Correct. One zero. This is right, sir. You are right. Very good. See, I you have said this is zero. A bar B bar 
This is A bar B. C will be A bar B bar. A bar B. Uh, C I. A bar. <coughs> A B bar. C I. A B. A B. Right. This is right also because uh, this is A bar B C I. A bar B C I. A bar B. A bar B C I. A bar B C I. A bar B C I. A B bar C I. A B bar. A B bar C I good paka perfect okay I'm happy at least my lectures are not going waste <laughs> okay you know you may not or even earlier but good right uh, please do assignment one and two your mentors are supposed to correct them. Individuals, I think Usha Nagarajan must have already sent you a mail. Please do it. There is no point in coming and sitting here and going. You should learn. Learning is best thing. See, I have given so many exercises, so many problems. In the class also I am giving you problems. I think you should. That is what it is. Just reading a book, memorizing it is not what is needed. You should understand the concepts and work out problems. And most of the examples I am giving you are practical examples. Okay then, see you Wednesday, on Wednesday. Thank you sir, thank you so much. Thank you.